Hey coders and welcome to episode 8 of our script service playlist on the Google App Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about viewing project triggers. So there are two methods to do this. It is get project triggers and get user triggers for a document, form, or spreadsheet. There's also one more thing I want to cover in this video and that is accessing the triggers dashboard which gives you a UI view of all of the triggers that you have is extremely helpful and extremely useful so I think we should cover that right now. Let's say you want to take a look at all of the triggers associated with this project and you want to do it programmatically. So the method that you would use is get project triggers. And if you remember from episode 1.1, we actually did use this method right here. And we got for each trigger, get the handler function of it. If that was equal to our function name, which is send email, delete the trigger. If not, then just return nothing. So that is a real life use case scenario of it. So this does come in handy. And again, the get project triggers is a method directly off of the script app class. So let's get the project triggers. Here it is right here, and it returns an array of triggers. So let's look a little bit more deeply into what this method actually does in this video. We'll log it, we'll hit save, we'll hit run, we'll hit view, we'll hit logs. And as we're waiting for the logs, so this method again is going to return an array of triggers, and it's going to be all of those triggers associated with this script, but also with this account. So you can collaborate on scripts with other people, and if they make their own triggers, then those triggers will not appear in this in this array. It's only going to be the ones that you made with this account on this script, and also it's only going to be those installable triggers. So if you if you ran this script, say on a or if you ran this method on a bounded script and you had set up simple triggers like on open or on edit. Those on open, those on edit triggers will not appear right here. These are only the installable triggers. Great, so it has returned, and it has returned eight separate triggers, which makes sense because we were making triggers left and right in all of these episodes. So we'll just hit OK and say we wanted just one of those triggers. Now we have a list of methods that we can use. We've already used get handler function, but some of these other ones like get trigger source, get unique ID, I'm sure have their use cases in some scenario. So that is for returning all of the project triggers. Let's say that you're working on a file or a project and you're only concerned about those triggers that were associated with this spreadsheet right here. Well, you can use the method get user triggers. So let's see that now. We'll hit period, we'll hit get user triggers. And there are three different options one for all the triggers associated with a document, one for a form and one for a spreadsheet. So let's say again that we were interested in the spreadsheet and it's already conveniently named spreadsheet. So that is our parameter. And we'll hit save, we'll hit run. Great, and then we'll hit logs, take a look at our logs. And this will return again all of the triggers that are directly connected by, via an installable trigger on this, on this script itself, on this project itself from this account and then we can see that those are three separate triggers which makes sense i'm pretty sure this one is for say on open the next one's probably for on edit and then the next one is for on change if you remember from those episodes great so you can see that we have three we have set up three separate triggers for this for this um for this project great so we can do that programmatically but there is also a way we can do it manually and that is by clicking up on this app script uh, trigger dashboard button right here. So this is an icon. It looks like a clock and it kind of looks like a uh, speech bubble as well. It's kind of like a morph between those two. But if we click on it, then now we're redirected to a new window and it has a list of all of the triggers that are on this script, again, made by this account, David the Y7. So uh, it looks like again, yep, there are eight triggers just like the pro, just like the method had listed. And so from here we can add new triggers and we can add them manually. So let's say we wanted to do something like timestamp and then we could uh, set up a time driven uh, event for timestamp and then we could say pick the say it was like a day timer or a minutes timer, hour timer, say every hour or every 
eight hours, something like that. Again, this is just one way to do it. You can do it manually, and then you can say, all right, if it fails, notify me immediately, and save and make that new trigger. However, you can also edit existing triggers. So let's say we go into here and we say, all right, we want to change this on change. We can hit this pencil icon, and then we can say, all right, instead of on change, now we want to change it to on edit. And you can do it like that uh, as well. So that's pretty cool. And then it also gives you uh, data such as like when it last ran, the event, um, stuff like that. If you go into this more options button, you can also see the executions, all the executions, and then but or just the failed executions. You can delete the trigger just like this, uh, get project details. But again, this is just a valuable resource that I use a lot. It's just a quick way to see all the triggers and get all the data all at once. It's a user interface, so it's nice and friendly to the eyes. It's not just code all the time. Um, but that is that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.